Yeah, hi traders. Uh, welcome to this video. Uh, today I have a very special guest. It's uh, Ivan from Canada. And um, you know him uh, from Twitter and also from maybe his books and uh, his uh, course. He's one of my favorite Twitter followers uh, when it comes to mindset topics. And um, yeah, I also read his book. I uh, looked into uh, his um, course about um, mindset and becoming a trader. So welcome, Ivan. Thank you so much for having me on, Julian. Yeah. Um, Ivan, before we dive into a lot of different um, mindset topics and also trader topics, um, say a few words about yourself. So who are you and, and uh, how was your journey um, to start with trading and also how um, you got interested in, in all the mindset topics about trading? Right. So I started trading for a living in, in 06. So that's about um, 15, 16 years ago. Um, but I was in, interested in financial markets. I, I started studying them much earlier during my teenage years. Um, I, um, I grew up in France with a single mother in a poor and troubled family. Uh, so, you know, social welfare, food stamps and, and all of that. And I remember one day I was hanging out in my high school's library uh, during the recess. And there I discovered, I believe an unofficial version, French version of the book, How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Market by Nicholas Darvis. Uh, I, I say unofficial because the book and didn't have any barcode or whatever, and it, it, it was just falling apart. Um, and it felt informal. So, and how it ended in the school library, I don't know. But yeah, I, I took the book, I studied it, and immediately I became fascinated by the man and, and what he had achieved in, in the market. So over the years, I took little jobs here and there with, with with one long-term goal in mind, uh, to save enough money for, for a trading account and an attempt to replicate Darvis's success, um, which brings us to 06 when I plunged um, uh, full-time in, in, into trading. And while I, I wasn't successful right from the get-go, it's important to, to note that it was a difficult journey for me, you know, lots of ups and downs, um, but I'm very fortunate to be in the position that I am today. I mean, I now manage a big, a, a rather big uh, fund for me and my clients uh, from the comfort of my, my home. And that fits me very well because uh, once again, I'm an introvert. And that's, that's actually one of the reasons why I became, uh, uh, I became a trader in the first place, I, I, why I got so attracted to it. Uh, early on, it's because unlike most prof professions out there in life, you can do it completely alone. Uh, su success and failure uh, depends entirely on on you, on you, on yourself as a person. So, long story short, I I'm the I'm the epitome of a Mister Nobody who, who's done really well for himself and made a name for himself in this field. I mean, I don't come from money to begin with. I mean, high school dropout. I, I have a learning difficulty as well, uh, but I'm very committed and passionate and, and, and driven and sincere when I set my mind to something. So that's a little bit about me and my journey in a nutshell. Yeah, very interesting. I personally also believe that the most successful traders and also the most traders which are... Um, yeah, which are happy with themselves are not the persons you find on Twitter. When, when, when I look, for example, also in the US investing championship and I Google some names and try to find out about uh, the, the top uh, traders from, from the music, I, I made the experience that a lot of them are not the most extrovert people on, on Twitter or um, or um, on YouTube, for example. So they are very focused on their own trading. They are very focused um, on, 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 yeah, on their own trading style and, and not so much 
uh, to to uh, represent themselves on on Twitter and and all those social networks. Yeah, um, I completely agree with you, Julian. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you you said uh, that you started with Nicholas Darius, so that means uh, you traded stocks, uh, I think, in, in in the beginning. And um, are you still uh, trading stocks today, or or what is your trading style? Right. So I I trade mostly stocks, um, U U.S. stocks and European stocks. Occasionally, I'll dabble in the forex markets. Um, and uh, I, I'm, I'm cultivating an interest in crypto cryptocurrencies these days. I'm trying to learn as much as I can about them. I don't trade them per se. You know, I find them, especially the exchanges, what's happening with them. It's a little bit shady. So, so I think we're still in the early days of it. So I don't trade them, but I hold a basket of different cryptocurrencies for the very long term. We're talking about decades. And I suspect that a few of them, a handful of them, will end up making me money. Uh, but but I you know I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if most of them end in in losses. So that's that's about it for 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 my trading. And if I'm not mistaken, you asked about my trading style as well, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so well. First, I feel like it's important to explain my views on, on the nature of financial markets, because this greatly informs the way I, I choose to approach them and, and, and strategize within them. Um, and people are free to agree with disagree or disagree with, with my thesis, um, but this is how I view things. Um, I, I believe that long-term trends and, and cycles are, are broadly predictable. Uh, but I also believe that that as you zoom in on the lower timeframes, like the intraday uh, timeframe or, or even the daily, uh, the more noise there is, which makes predicting the outcome of your next trade very difficult, essentially a random pro pro proposition or very close to one. Um, a, a good metaphor that I like to use when explaining this to to friends and relatives and, and or even potential clients is the difference between uh, the weather and the seasons. The, the weather is, is, is hardly predictable, right? But seasons are. So in my view, uh, markets are just like that. The short-term action is like the weather, uh, but and, and the larger trends and, and, and long-term cycles are like the seasons. You, 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 might, you might not know uh, with certainty what the weather will be like this afternoon or tomorrow or next week or next month, but you, you know when, when the season starts and, and, and when, when winter will start and when it will end and, and what winter will bring broadly, right? So in, in summer, let's say, you, you know that you'll likely get warm, sunny days in winter, you'll, you'll likely get cold, rainy, or even snowy days. Likewise, in bull markets, dips are likely to get bought up uh, and, and be short-lived. In bear markets, uh, rips are likely to, 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 to get sold into and, and be short-lived. So that's exactly how I view this, and, and people may agree with it or disagree with it, with this assessment. But for me, it makes great sense, and it informs the way I I approach the market. Um, now, given this view, uh, I, I found that a, a, a combined approach to trading works well for me. Uh, so, so, so that's what I do. I, I'm a trend trader and I assess the long-term trend and, and cycle using discretionary means while keeping my, my trade entry and exit uh, systematic. So in, in other words, I, I look at charts and, and use my knowledge of fundamental analysis of, 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 of the global uh, macroeconomic forces that shape uh, markets and, and of human psychology, of course, to determine the overall direction of my trades. Then I use hard rules to execute those trades systematically. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Mo most, and most of my trades have an asymmetric risk reward bent and I'm playing the, num the numbers game, which is to say I'm, I'm levering 
leveraging the laws, the law of large numbers. I, I apologize for a long, long winded uh, <laughs> response, but that's how I feel about it. Yeah, it's super interesting because uh, at the moment when, when, when I personally look at the stock market, so I'm, I'm trading um, US stocks uh, only. So uh, just maybe uh, from time to time, uh, a Canada stock or whatever, but 99% uh, US stocks. And at the moment you, you can see that there are, or there, there, there have been in the, in the last weeks, a lot of commodity stocks, oil stocks, miners, are fertilizers. So typical cyclicals are, are coming up and also are in favor of stock market. And you can see all the parallel or the, the parallels to, to the economy, economical uh, situation. So, you know, we, we, have a, we have a very strong, but maybe slowing down economy right now. So there's a high shortage in, in a lot of areas. And um, this is why, for example, from my perspective, all these stocks are holding up so good. And this is w w what you said, you know, to, to have the, the long-term view, to have the, the big picture and then create try trading ideas from that. That is exactly um, what, what uh, not, not what I'm doing 100%, but where I think, okay, um, I can understand that. And also um, it fits a little bit to, to my own style. Um, mm -hmm. Are you doing, or are, are you more, um, um, I, I, or I assume you are not a short-term trader in, in that um, in, in that field, but holding positions for for weeks to months, or what? What is your average holding time? Right. So, so I trade three strategies now. Uh, one of them is based on the weekly time frame. So, so it's it's it's, it's very it's, it's quite long term, um, and then. Um, and, and it's a mostly systematic strategy. Well, I, like I would say 90, 99% of the time, I, you know, everything is systematic about it. Um, and then I have a day trading strategy based on the 30 minute time frame. Uh, this one is an options trading strategy. And um, yeah, so, so, I, so it's a 30 minute time frame. I'm usually in and out within the day. Uh, sometimes I will carry positions over, overnight. Um, and there's a big, somewhat big disc discretionary parameter with this uh, strategy in, in, in the uh, profit taking aspect of it, which is to say uh, most, most of my other decisions uh, um, with that strategy are systematic, but the only discretionary uh, aspect of it is the profit uh, taking. So this is a uh, you know, I've been using this strategy for, for a very long time. Uh, it's been working really well for me. And the last strategy is most of a, mostly a buy and hold strategy. I, so it's, it's a value. Um, I, I buy, um, I buy, um, how do I put this? I buy stocks that are undervalued, right? And, and I, I typically buy them during crashes. And I hold them for the long term. So this is the third strategy in a nutshell. It's just buying, buying low and selling high. Um, yeah, that's it. That, that's very interesting because I personally made the experience and also have, have in my mind that a lot of traders are one trick ponies. So they, they master one style very good, are very focused on that. And how do you handle different trading strategies? Because they also can give you um, opposite signals. So for yes. example, in the, in the long term, so buy and hold strategy, you, you buy when, 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 the, uh, when the prices are down a lot so that you can, can buy value at a, at a reasonable price or very cheap. So then you have the, the, the midterm strategy maybe on the weekly chart, which, which gives you a total different signal. So, so how do you handle that? Yeah, so so these strategies usually they allow me to sort of smooth my equity curve because mm -hmm. usually when I'm in losing strategy with one when when I'm losing money with one strategy the other one is making me money because it's on a lower time frame and 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 the risk reward propositions are different as well. For instance, on my long term trading strategy, I'm going to typically shoot for a risk reward of of um, one to three, which is to say that I'm going to risk one to 
to hopefully win three, right? And everything is systematic. Uh, and, and with this strategy, my, my win rate is pretty low. It's, it's about 35 to 40%. Um, this means that most of the time I'm losing money, right? I'm, I'm reaping losses, but mm -hmm. I, I, I play the long-term game. I play the numbers game. I, I keep placing my trades. And, 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 and I know that in the long term, you know, the whole, the whole strategy, the system has a, has a positive expected value, which is to say that it's gu virtually guaranteed to make me money in the long run. Um, and, and then I have this short term strategy that, um, that allows me to capture short term like, price moves, like on a, uh, you know, within the day on a, on, on a, on an intraday basis. And so this combination of, of the long term and the short term allows me to smooth my re revenue curve um, and I found that this works really well for me and I'm, I'm a very active trader in that I can have at any one time I, I can have up to 50 trades at a time so um, and and since I trade a rather large fund right I, I'm, I'm not I'm not risking more than 0.5 to one percent of my total fund per position size. So, so, so the amount I'm risking per trade is very insignificant. So that, that's what allows me to, to have such a large number of trades at any one point. And so, as you can imagine, my day is, is constantly getting in and out of, of, of trades. I'm constantly getting stopped out. My profit targets are constantly getting triggered. Um, and, and, you know, again, I'm betting on the long-term positive expected value of those systems. So, in 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 uh, in, in a summary, so you are trading multiple strategies at the same time. Yes. I also assume that that you um, that you shift capital between the strategies, or do do you have all the strategies with the same capital? Um, so 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 it's a fund, and I. I use different strategies. It's 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 so so I use different strategies on different accounts, but the the, mm -hmm. the fund belongs to me and my clients basically. But but I have different accounts within within that okay. fund. That so reason. so so your clients are assigned to to uh, a certain strategy. Oh uh, no, uh, we, oh, no, we, okay. Yeah, I like I trade those different strategies for the the whole fund in in like in general. So uh, but but on, but on different accounts. To sort of segregate uh, those strategies in terms of my mindset as well, and and so this allows me to to, to stay disciplined and stay process driven and stick to those different strategies within those different accounts. Yeah, because this is very important to also segregate different strategies so that right. you are not influenced by by one strategy when you are executing another one. So, right. because as you said. When one of the strategy is losing, another one can win at the situation. In the overall equity curve, it helps you because it smooths the equity curve and you are constantly making money in the end. But if you are managing the strategies from, from day to day and do your day job, you must really separate everything so that you, you can execute your strategy very well. Um, That, that brings me to, to one topic. So I'm, I'm sure you have a very clear trading routine. Is it right? Right, right. So I, um, I, how, like, how do you... I, I have a very specific morning routine for sure. All right. Um, how, how, do you, how, how, uh, how is your trading routine? So, so what are you doing on a daily basis? Right. Um, so my, my routine has changed a lot over, over the years. It, it never stays the same. Uh, it, it changes depending on the circumstances of, of my life. But one thing that has really changed is my first hour morning routine. And um, here, here's what I've been doing for the past six, seven years now. First, I wake up early in the morning. I'm, I'm a morning person. So I go to bed early at night. Right, so so that I can, so I find it easier to wake up early in the morning, um, and the reason why I do that is that I value my sleep as well, and I also find that I'm more relaxed and and productive in in the morning. And right after I wake up, I 
I, and this is, this has been a constant in my life, you know, for the past six, seven years, I, I do my best to think positive thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much of a neurotic person. I, I tend to overthink things. Uh, and, and that's why mindfulness meditation plays such a big role in, in my life. Uh, but we'll, we'll get to that later, later on. The, the point I'm trying to get at here is that when I wake up in the morning, I think positive thoughts because what typically gets us out of bed are our thoughts, right? Of, of what we need to do, you know, worries about the future, anxieties, and so on. It, it's rarely positive, empowering thoughts. So when I wake up I, and my mind slowly uh, gathers, I, I do exactly that. I, I, I immediate, immediately think of how a privilege it is to be alive and to be in good health and to, to have a loving person by my side and, and to, to love what I do for, for a living. And this sort of um, disrupts my automatic patterns, you know, of, of, of my automatically my automatic patterns and tendencies of my mind. Um, and of course, I don't always succeed at, at doing that because the worries and the anxieties, they sneak up on me sometimes. And so what I do right after is that I, I do a 20 to 30 minute meditation. So, so when I get out of bed, play with the cat a little bit and, I, and I, I pick a glass of water and I turn on the coffee machine and then I go meditate for 20, 30 minutes uh, while this lovely smell of coffee spreads across, you know, the room mm -hmm. uh, and tickle my senses. Then uh, I turn off my, my computers on, my, my trading station. Um, I sort of scribble in my thought journal. I have a specific journal that I keep for, for my, so I, I call it my thought journal. And it's separate from my trading log where I record uh, my, you know, when I log in my, my trades. Um, but that, my thought journal helps me sort of uh, um, put into words what I'm feeling about the market and what I'm feeling in terms of my emotions as well, in terms of my thoughts. Uh, and um, yeah, then I'll glance over the news briefly um, and uh, I'll see what's happening in the market. I'll, I'll look over the futures and see what's what's uh, you know what's driving the market on this specific day. Uh, then after that, I'll review my my action plan for the, the day. Action plan that I've devised the previous day, by the way, which is very important to, to me. I really like to come prepared. If if I don't come prepared, I'm I'm not gonna trade. And I've refined this to to a science. You know, for, for me, there's no doubt in, in my mind. Every single day I come prepared. And if it on 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 a particular day I feel unsure, I'm 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 not gonna trade. I've lost a lot of money this this way. I and it's not some something that I've that I play with. You know, it's uh, it's I'm very systematic about that. So I review my action plan for for the day. I look at my levels that I've re written the previous day. Uh, yeah pretty straightforward. Um, that, that's pretty much it. This is my lovely morning routine. And when, when the, the market opens, I, I ask, you know, my orders, my limit orders are, are usually getting, you know, getting triggered. Uh, my stop losses are, are getting triggered and I observe all of that. And I place new trades if, if there are new opportunities in the market. So, so that's, Pretty much it, Julian. It's 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 very systematic for me, and and I've been uh, doing this morning routine for the past six seven years now. Oh, and and one important thing as well is that when I wake up in the morning, I mean me and my partner we have we have this sort of um, uh, no talk uh, morning thing going on, and uh, we we've had that for the past two three years. We we just we just don't talk to each other. And personally, I find this very helpful because it allows me to, to be with myself, you know, and, and to process my, my feelings and my emotions. So we, we don't talk to each other. We, we're going to have coffee together. And, and, um, and that's it. Then I'm going to go to my trading station. And uh, it's, um, 
like I, I feel like it's it's a very lovely morning routine for, for me. It helps me process uh, my emotions and, and what's happening in my own thoughts. Uh, that's pretty much it. And we'll, we'll break silence only when there's something important. But other than that, most of the time, we, we won't talk to each other. Yeah. It's very interesting. Uh, years ago, I read a book about, um, it, or it was called um, The Miracle Morning. So where, where I first um, got in touch uh, with having a morning routine and, and also doing things in the morning, um, which helps you to, to, yeah, to, to get in a positive state so that you, that you are able to master the day much better. So I must admit, I'm not that, <laughs> I'm not that guy. So it's, it's not uh, my personal style, but I can absolutely um, understand what you're talking about. So getting into the right mindset and then also going to your trading station, execute your strategy And, and of course, be prepared. I personally always say that that 90% in trading is preparation. So there are very, very few days or, or, um, or weeks where you have to, to change your, your course 100% or something. When the markets are very volatile, yes, you have to adapt and sometimes you have to To adapt every day and, and also um, create new scenarios and adapt your analysis. But I personally, I do the most um, trading work at the weekend. So prepare, prepare all the watch lists, prepare all my um, all my possible trades for the next week. And in the week itself, I'm just observing. So I monitor the market. I maybe prepare the next day, but that's all. So and. I, I, I see that so, so much on Twitter and also um, people who are writing emails to me when they say, um, oh, I missed that trade or um, I, I missed that market situation. It always comes down to preparation. Preparation is one of the most important things for me. And then being in the right state of mind to execute your plan to not deviate from that and do other, other things. So really execute your plan. And then that's, uh, I, I think, what, what you are also talking about. Do, do you do also a lot of trading work at the weekend or is the weekend yeah, private and you use it for, for different things? Usually my weekends are, are reserved for just to rest and recover and, and to just to be with 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 my loved ones and to spend time outside and all, all of that i i'm going to do some research on sunday sundays mm -hmm. sunday in, in, evening to get prepared for for the coming week um but other than that i i don't spend i'm i'm at a point in my trading uh, career where you know everything is pretty much streamlined and i i don't have to put as much work as as i used to in the past And um, yeah, I mean, this comes with experience, right? Because I know what I'm looking for in the market. Um, like I have my watch list ready and, and I, I have certain names that I trade, trade within that watch list that are, you know, things that I've been trading for a very, very long time. And I sort of, um, I know when things are setting up, setting up And I know my levels and I know my, my risk uh, uh, management parameters. Like it, it's, it's second nature now. It, like most of my process is second nature. So the research in our days doesn't take me long, you know, an hour at best on, on Sundays. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's, it's, it's all just streamlined now. And, and this, is, this is the point where I, I feel like, um, you know, This is where most trade traders should should aspire to uh, to evolve towards. Because look, if if you're quitting your your job, if if you're if you want to be a trade trader, if you don't want to sort of have a traditional normal job out out there, you you have to make sure that your trading is providing you the, with the kind of freedom that your other jobs don't don't give you, right? So it, it's like. This comes with experience and, and, and time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I sometimes say, so 
never underestimate experience and training. It is so important uh, when you have uh, when you have ten years experience and you you did the same things and and, and uh, evolved over time and improved your strategies, etc. This is so helpful, especially when 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 it comes to analysis, doing research. People sometimes ask me, so how can you uh, screen 500 charts in a couple of minutes? Yeah, exactly, because I know exactly what I'm looking for. So these are almost the same patterns. These are almost the same, um, sometimes the same stocks. I know the story. I know the company in my mind. And uh, over the years, uh, you are gaining a lot of experience in that. And this is especially something new traders uh, yeah new traders uh, w will have to do so they 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 have to build up the experience and need patience for that um, because it is so important to to be successful in in, in trading right I'm I'm right with you brother yeah um, then let's let's come to to a little bit some uh, mindset uh, topics because I personally think this is this is one of one very interesting area where I um, also observe uh, your Twitter feed and also your work. And you talked about that meditation. You talked about that getting into the right mindset every morning, etc. So, how do you start to get interesting in all these mindset topics and psychology, and also combine and combine that with training? Right. Um, it's, it's a great question, by the way. Um, my, my own struggles sort of uh, ignited my interest in, in this area of trading. So remember, I began trading in, for, for a living in 06. So, so I thought, of course, uh, but I actually, it, it was actually the start of a multi-year multi enrollment in the School of Hard Knocks for me. That's, that, that's a poetic way of putting it. So, um, yeah, um, like most traders, I started trading using my full discretion, uh, but I quickly found out that this wasn't working out for me. And I began understanding uh, the importance of, of, of having a system. And so I went through a period of, 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 of quote unquote system hopping and, and, and system chasing until I eventually developed my, my own system. Um, and initially I did make money here and there, but I almost always ended up giving back those profits to the market and, and more. So I, I was just, I was just too emotionally involved in my trades early on, you know, and every trade was, uh, an emotional roller coaster. winning trades would give me a buzz. Losing trades would, would make me depressed. I, I could never could never summon enough patience uh, to wait for my trades or to let them work without without compulsively uh, tweaking them that that was my ultimate predicament so for the longest time uh, market success seemed um, so elusive so um, so close yet so out of reach uh, I, I was desperately looking for solutions uh, on the external, you know, outside solutions, when my solutions were really internal. Uh, and I, I wasn't really, I wasn't even aware of that. But eventually it became more and more apparent to me. And that's when my whole, uh, my, my whole journey uh, towards self-discovery started. Um, so I, I took a long break from, from trading and went on this, uh, on a self-discovery journey could call it that it's self-discovery journey. And I, I had the chance to, um, to study meditation uh, with quite a few renowned meditation teachers out there in different traditions, uh, both in the, we in the East and the West. And this six month long experience, uh, you know, living in monasteries and, and learning about myself and, and, and my place in life and learning about philosophy and, and the, the intricacies of, of the practice of mindfulness and its, and its ethical component. Uh, this had a profound impact on me as a person. Uh, it changed the way I think about myself, about my life, about its circumstances. 
um, I, I also had plenty of time to think about the market and my, my failures uh, as, as a trader. I also learned the, the um, esoteric yet, yet the crucial skill of, of working with your emotions and understanding them and their nature. And um, yeah, so later when I came back to my quote unquote normal life, I began trading again because I was out of a job by then and I had to earn a living. But with this um, newfound self-knowledge uh, and, and this newfound maturity and how I deal with my emotions and how I navigate my, my inner landscape, trading was now a completely different experience for me. It's just like night and day difference. And at some point along the way, I decided that I, I wanted to get certified as a meditation teacher. And um, as my trading performance started to, to improve, it, it kept improving over, over the years. I decided that I, I wanted to share my thoughts online. And that's how my work at Trading Composure started. Um, all, all in all, it was an, an uh, organic a process of wanting to share what I learned. So uh, that's that's how I'm, I got interested in and, and got started in in the whole mindset and psychology thing. Very interesting. Um, if you, when you, when you returned from from your uh, from, from your journey uh, to learn how to uh, to to meditate in your self discovery, did it or did your new mindset and work? Did that work right away from the scratch, or, or were there a time when you when you tried to adopt this new mindset and make it compatible uh, with with your trading? So, well, it, it, this 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 um, mindset uh, work that I had done on this meditation journey, it, it was really. Um, work of in introspection, of looking into myself and my thoughts and my emotion and seeing what's there uh, without fear or favor, you know? And, and so, so it, it, I immediately saw the benefits in, in, in trading this, this art of mindfulness, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about. It, 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 I really saw the benefits that it, it gave me as a trader in the market, this sort of ability to look at myself and to, to, to look at my emotions and my thoughts with, with a little bit more um, freedom, a little bit more sort of distance and, and not taking them to be, to, to be, to be I, to be self. Uh, I, I immediately found the, uh, the, the, the benefits and, and, and I found this, this uh, technique very practical as, as, as a trader because it helped me immediately. And um, it helped me deal with, with the inevitable ups and downs of, of, of trading with more stability. So, so I immediately saw, saw the benefits. Now, that doesn't mean that I was immediate, immediately profitable. No, because my you know, profitability is, is, it sort of lags a little bit. When, when you start to, to follow your plan in, in the market, when you start to follow your system to the letter, and, and, and you start to, to, to be consistent in your behavior because of the, the uh, quasi-random distribution in trade outcomes in the short term, you, you're, you're not gonna notice, um, you, you're not gonna get immediate feedback um, on you know, what you're doing right. So, so, so there's a little bit of lag time before you start to see the results materialize in your trading performance. So, so yeah, I, I saw my, my results getting better over time. And, and that was a real paradigm shift for, for me. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, Julian. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially you, you, you dropped the word mindfulness. So this is, this is something which reminds me about my own trading um, process. I personally discovered always that I sometimes have these, these one one second click before I execute something. This is this is something I discovered for myself, and this is something I learned over the time to avoid spontaneous action, to avoid um, yeah getting getting in, involved too emotional into the markets, and 
I personally think, or I personally, when, when, when I trade or when, when, when I place a trade or when I do um, a certain action in my, my own uh, portfolio, I always have this one second where my, my brain automatically uh, starts to ask questions about that. So is it compatible with my rules? Is it exactly uh, what I want to do or is it driven by emotions? So this is, I think this helps me a lot to execute my, my trading strategy better. And I think this is also what, what, you, what you said about mindfulness, right? Right, 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 exactly. Well, it helps you develop a certain um, delay between an event and your response. You, you know, I was, I, was, um, I was walking down the street the other day and, and I saw this, uh, this, uh, this guy who ran a red light and and so the the you know the other guy who was at the intersection they sort of they they, they were about to have a like car accident and one of them uh, got out of, of of his car and was full on rage was super angry and was was about to was going on to open the the, the other guy's um, uh, door and to hit him and all of that and I was like, "Whoa! This is this is what it is to to be lost, like like in your thoughts, in your emotions, and w- without having this sort of like w- without having this ability to to step back, without having cultivated this ability to step back and to 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 be like, okay, I'm 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 feeling anger, you know, what I'm feeling in my in my body, the way it feels." the thoughts that I have, this feels like, this feels like anger. And I'm, I'm going to step back, I'm going to observe it. And I'm not going to act on it um, blindly. I'm, 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 I'm going to sort of um, cultivate wisdom in how I, I decide to express it in the world. And it's, uh, look, like a lot of people are, are like that, they, they blindly react to their emotions. Um, let alone in, in the outside world, in, in the market, people blindly react to their emotions. And they, there's no distance between them and their thoughts and their emotions. So that's, that's what fuels emotional trading errors. And so, look, if, if you do a quick Google search for the term trading psychology or, or trader's mindset, you, you'll find an onslaught of trading psychology uh, solutions out there from NLP to psychotherapy to uh, uh, what else? To uh, hypnosis, to breath work, and the list goes on and on and on. All of those uh, are there to help you deal with your emotions while trading so you can make better, more informed, rational decisions in, in the market. And these solutions are potentially all very helpful. I'm not here to to sort of talk them down. But, but personally, I like mindfulness a lot because it's very simple, it's very practical, it's very effective, especially for traders. There's, there's no need for long monologues, monologues or, or, or deep dives or, or you know, it's uh, rehashing the, the, the obvious. I'm, I'm also not here to impress you with my jargon or, or, or my college degrees because the fact is I have none of those. I said earlier, I'm a high school dropout. Okay, but uh, I've been a trader for a very long time, and I can see very confidently that that I understand the psychology of trading very well, and because I've struggled with it, as I've said, big time, and and mindfulness has helped me um, understand my emotions better, uh, and um, and I, I've I've seen that 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 it it works really well in in a trading investing context, and. Mindfulness is, is very has a very um, is something that I have a very particular interest in per, uh, pertaining to the reasons you know uh, as I said before my my own personal journey uh, the fact that I've studied it uh, so let let me attempt to explain what it is very simply because you, you'll often hear platitudes like you, you know mindfulness is living in the present moment mm. uh, in 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 my opinion this doesn't fully describe what mindfulness is right because uh dogs for instance they 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 leave 
they live or they, they seem to live in the present moment, right? But, but they don't look at all mindful, right? So, so mindfulness has to mean something more than just, uh, quote unquote, living in the present moment. Um, a, a better definition uh, for me at least could be that mindfulness is the awareness that we all have, that all human beings have, um, the, the awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally to your experiences. I, I, I feel like this is a great way of describing it, uh, but, but still it doesn't do it quite just, it doesn't quite do it justice because uh, it's, it's like you're ask me, asking me to say in a few words, you, you know, what is love, you know, uh, <laughs> or, or, or what is art? It's, it's not so easy because um, mindfulness, um, like art or love, e even though those are very simple, you know, even prosaic words, uh, the, the words themselves in, in English don't really capture the, 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 um, the full, the, the, the richness of the experience. Right. So actually the state of mind that is mindfulness is is hugely rich and, and hugely nuanced. Uh, I've spent a lot of time studying this with 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 uh, renowned teachers and, and on on and off retreats. And um, what I can say for, for sure is that mindfulness, uh, some of its main characteristics are are composure, clear seeing, and insight. Uh, yeah, composure, clear seeing, and insight. Th those are the elements of mind that you are reinforcing with a consistent mindfulness practice. And, and, and you can do this 10 minutes a day. You can do this 20 minutes a day. You can do, it, do this an hour. You, you, you decide how much time you, you sort of want to put into this. But this simple practice will provide you with with very concrete um, um, benefits in terms of your psychology as you approach the market and that that's how practical it is and i'm i'm sorry for rambling julian but uh yeah it, I, I don't know if i've have have uh, strayed away from <laughs> from your original question you, you can you can let me know fine. everything uh, everything good so I, I, I personally um also um think that it's highly individual or individual. What is the right way and method for you as a person? I'm, for example, I personally also like to talk to myself. So this is one way I'm dealing with a lot of things, with a lot of things I observe in the markets, how I create scenarios, how I reflect my own thoughts. And this is something which helped me a lot to discover um, uh, to discover a method for myself how I how I can work for um, or on my mindset. And a lot of people always think that there is one method. So, for example, mindfulness, meditation, whatever. And I personally think no, that's not. There is one method which is compatible with you, you as a person. Yeah. So if you are more a visual guy, then, then don't know, start writing or something or, or start painting. Um, or if you are a more a guy who, who, who uh, speaks to themselves, or you have to discover one way for you. And I think this is much more important um, when you want to work on your mindset that you find out. So what is something which, yeah, which, which really gets into your mind how you can influence yourself listen to you observe yourself and this is the first step i think you have to discover before you can really change as start changing your your mindset in in the right direction right i completely agree with you and what i think i'm he hearing you say here is that um what 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 you're saying is that um re regardless of what you choose it's important to live an examined life, whether you, you, you choose to do it by way of writing or meditation or contemplation or, or sports or long solo walks, or as you said, art, 
it, it doesn't matter. The importance is that you develop a, a sort of a, a, a deeper way of thinking about yourself and the world and that, that you develop a sort of philosophy and an empowering philosophy that helps you weather the, the, the ups and downs of the market and, and, and more broadly of life. And, and yeah, I, I completely agree. And my mission through my work, you, you know, my blog posts, my tweets and so on, is to encourage traders to develop that awareness of their in, inner lives by whatever mean, means they, you know, they choose. And the same is also true for, for philosophy. So I personally, I'm, I'm a fan of stoicism. So mm -hmm. I, I read a lot about books and I'm, I'm also um, reading a lot about history. So I'm very interested in, in, in Greek history, in, in Roman history, etc. And right. be, be, because those years or the, those times, the thousand years um, before Christ, um, those times shows me that we are talking about the same psychology and mindset problems Uh, today as 2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago. There, there is nothing so much changed in, in the years. And even people who lived 3,000 years ago and were very focused or not, not so distracted by all the, uh, all the media we have today, for example, they are working on the same things. So they, they use different mediums like letters or whatever to communicate with each other, but they discuss about the same problems. Right. And this is something you, you can also observe in, 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 the, in the trading world. If you go back 100 years and you read Nicholas Davis, Jesse Livermore, whoever, they had the same problems as today. And people always think that, that technology is changing everything. Yes, but not the human people and human minds so much. Right, right, right. Exactly. I, I feel like it's this actually famous German philosopher Nietzsche that said that. Uh, you, 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 you. I'm paraphrasing, of course. He, he said he said that you can change human behavior, but not human nature. We all suffer from the same malady at the end of the day: fear, greed, whatever else. And it's a, you know, it's story of humankind, right? You know, right there. And we've been trying to find solutions to, to these problems since the dawn of time. And um, yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's the journey of being a human, like a human being. Absolutely. So the, the, the world outside is changing very, very quickly. The human nature didn't change so much in the years. We are very, very slow on changing our, our right. self. And so, that's, that's, that's part of the reason, part of the reason why you see repeatable patterns in the market as well. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Because they are based on, on psychology and, and, yeah. and mindset and buying and selling decision. There, there are so many people who always say that algorithms is, is changing everything. And that might be true on a, on a very, very, very small level. But what, what a lot of people forget is that also algorithms are programmed by humans. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I also had a lot of, con or I had contact to a lot of people who said, we are systematic traders, we, we are doing algorithms and trading by algorithms, etc. And sooner or later, they came to a point where they override or overrode a rule Where they, where they did not trust the system so much, they started to change the system, etc. And that is where, 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 where mindset and psychology also get into such a topic um, like algorithm training. So, and where, where you personally can see, okay, even algorithms, even 100% systematic trading depends also on, on psychology and mindset to execute the strategy at best and do not let the emotions into, uh, into, into the trading itself. Right, I completely agree. That's, that's why I've always felt that trading psychology is such an underappreciated element of trading. People like to think that they have, they have that part of the trading puzzle figured out. Yeah. But in actuality, it's, it's far from the truth. I mean, just look at the, the failure rate in, in this field in you know amongst traders it's very high 
And it's very high for a reason. It's, it's not because, you know, the, the market is unbeatable or because there's a lack of trading, viable trading strategies out there or be, because of X, Y, or Z. It's, it's, it's a mindset reason. You know, people are fallible. They, they make predictably poor decisions. And uh, that's, um, you know, that's what people like you and, and me are, are, are actually trying to help people with. You know, it's it's to develop that awareness of their inner lives and to to start to make better decisions overall. You know, but personally, I, like I, I'm a big advocate of probabilistic thinking, which, which is to say, you know, it's, it's it's the approach of of minimizing human decisions in in the process and and having a system with a long term positive expected value and betting on the numbers game. I mean. Um, you know that's uh that's that's the uh, thinking in bats. So the, this that's is the money maker right there. Yeah, that that's a keyword. Mm -hmm. So I, I get I get a question very often on on Twitter, and people ask me, so how can I work on my mindset? You already described that a little bit, but what would you answer? people uh, who are asking such or that, that question. So how can I work on my mindset? Um, like I, I would say the first step is to, to uh, start to appreciate how important the element of mindset is uh, in, in trading in the market and start to really appreciate that. And, and don't automatically assume that you have it you have this part of the trading puzzle figured out because most people don't. And, and, and then start to uh, look for reliable resources uh, that, that help you develop a, a winning, you know, mind, uh, winning trading psychology mindset. Um, and, you know, you, you do a good job at that. Um, I like to think that I do a good job at it as, as, as well. Uh, though mm -hmm. it's, it's, a little bit, it's a bit pretentious of, of me to say that. Um, and I don't mean to, to be pretentious at all. Uh, but um, yeah, just follow people that are, that share uh, nuggets of wisdom, you know, whether, whether it's through their blog posts or their, their Twitter accounts, social me media accounts in general, or on, on YouTube or, or whatever, and start to broaden your, your, your uh, perspective, you know, and start to open your mind and start to, to see how you can, uh, develop that, start to open your mind to the different methods out there that help you develop a, a sort of more uh, positive trading psychology, one that helps, that one that works for you in the market and not against you. That's the first step. And the second step, I, I would say to, I would say to reduce your, your trading size. Um, if you want to make it as a trader, if you're still a a newbie, a learner, a neophyte, I would say reduce your trade, trade size. Don't try to make it, uh, you know, to be the next trading legend right from the get-go. Start small, be humble, trade small sizes and focus on learning and, and, and focus on staying in the game. Because when you stay in the game, what this does is that it, it helps you um, develop an expertise, right? Be because Look, you you learn to walk by falling, right? Same when when you start to, to drive or when you swim, you, you learn by making mistakes. And, and so acknowledge that you're gonna make mistakes as a as a beginner, as a newbie, as a neophyte. You're you're gonna make mistakes. So trade small so, so you don't blow up, right? So so you stay in the game and focus on learning. And um, yeah, slowly over, over time as you gain more confidence, as you gain a method, as you gain as you as you gain trust in that method, then slowly increase your size if you feel like like doing so. But um, view view this whole trading journey as as a as a journey towards mastery. That's um, that's the best piece of advice I I can give. Uh, and and fo focus more on mindset. Um, and uh, yeah, you you'll you'll make it in in the end. Uh, just. Um, Stay disciplined. Develop a sincerity um, in as 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 you learn certain sincerity and commitment and 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 open mindedness and discipline, 
in in that process. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting that you say it about trading size because size is always something which has to do with emotions. When you put really big bets on, you are riding a roller coaster because small changes in a stock or in a future or whatever can really, really move your account up and down. And money is always attached to emotions. And When, when somebody asks me in, uh, about psychology problems and mindset problems, I often say that the same way. So I often say, trade smaller. And I also see that, that a lot of newbies are talking about, I would call that wrong topics. So they, they look into the wrong direction. For example, trading fees or something, which is also related to Uh, to 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 trading size and you said that so so you said try to 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 get started try to 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 um yeah to run a trading routine and a process and focus on that more and it's the same thing so many people are focusing on on trading fees and they try to get profitable i always say okay try to get profitable net fees so that fees doesn't matter in, in the first way. If you, if, you, if you extract all the fees from your trading spreadsheet and you are positive, then it's great. But right. the most people are, are not profitable um, and, and the fees doesn't matter or have not so much impact on that. So you are not, pro you are not uh, um, unprofitable because of the fees. You are unprofitable because you don't have an edge or you can cannot bring the life to uh, or the edge to life so this is a very very big uh, topic and 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 mindset work so, so that that's my definition mindset work has only one goal and that is execute your trading strategy at best without a lot of distractions um, so that you're really able to realize the edge you have Because the most people destroy the edge by themselves. So they yeah. are responsible for destroying the trading edge uh, because of mistakes, because of spontaneous trades, of emotions, etc. And that's why they are not profitable. Right, for, for sure. And, and speaking of that, one of the recurring questions I get on Twitter is how do I control my emotions? Mm -hmm. And my, my answer to, to this as, as a mindfulness practitioner is that I don't seek to control my emotion at all. At all. You know, that's, that's the thing. I, amidst a strong emotion, I, what I do is that I just connect to the awareness function of my mind and I let the thought and the emotion free flow and I simply observe it all from, from a sort of spectator's point of view. And overall, what I do is that I cultivate a friendlier attitude with myself whenever, uh, you know, whenever I feel a difficult emotion, especially, you know, in terms of whatever I'm, I'm, I'm feeling. This has almost become a second nature now at, at this point in, in my life. So that, that doesn't mean that I don't experience any hard emotions at all. I do, you know, because I'm a human being. Um, but cultivating a friendlier attitude towards my emotions and towards my thoughts help me deal with them um, with a little bit more wisdom and a little bit more uh, uh, ease and uh, yeah just don't don't take this and and I know it's somewhat controversial what I'm going to say is just don't take that whole the whole endeavor of trading too seriously um, try to view it as a game you know it, Because what I've discovered is that when you view trading as a game, you sort of, the sort of seriousness drops away and, and you, you take it with a little bit more lightness and a little bit more um, sort of motivation to get better, you, you know? And so that's the advice that I give quite often to, to, to people is that to try to view it as a game. I know there's, there's money involved. You know, I know money is important. It's very important. But if, if you can sort of uh, 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 view trading under a different light, un, under, under, you know, as, as, as something that you want to get better at, that you want to improve at, 
um, and, and, and just to not focus too much on the monetary value of, of this trade or that trade of the amount of money that you, you, you were winning or losing. You, you'll see that it'll, it'll, you, you'll tend to approach trading with a little bit more lightness and ease. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I, I also discovered for myself that it's important to, I would not say avoid, but be very careful with the information you consume, with the words you speak, because all the things have an emotional attachment. When you speak about bear market, bull market, when you speak about winner, uh, winners, losses, big wins, small losses, whatever, everything has something emotional attached. And also when you read certain books about, um, about trading, especially very popular books, which try to explain whatever, uh, how algorithms are bad for the financial world or whatever, or if you're watching movies like Wall, uh, Wolf of Wall Street or Wall Street as a classic movie, that everything impacts you that has something which gets into your mind, which change your, your, um, your view at trading and how a trader should behave, etc. And this is super important also for me. I personally try to avoid discussions in that direction, which are emotionally loaded and also where people uh, try to, to, to talk too much about um, uh, external things which have to do with, with trading. So for example, don't know, monitors, cars, uh, superstars in the trading world, etc. Because everything has an influence on you and you must really have a clear mind when you, when you attach or when, when you come to the markets. I personally, I always have a mind, um, I think about Ed Sakota or something, who, who lived on the countryside on a lake um, away from 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 the Wall Street and is doing its uh, his trades. So and and try to not be influenced by all the external things, and and, and try to have a very clear mind when you, when you come to the markets. Yeah, for sure. And focus on survival. You know, so survival is is key in this game. You you create your own luck by. Yeah by taking your chances time and again, and by making sure you stay in the game long-term. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know that you are also offering a lot of help. So you, you have your blog, you have your newsletter. Um, what do you else offer for, for people who are interested um, in learning more about mindset work and, and psychology? Right, so, so my work centers around, as I've said earlier, the, the, the psychology of trading also called trading psychology or investment psychology. So, so you're not going to get charts with, with, with me, uh, charts and analysis and all of that. I really st strictly focus on the mindset of, of trading and, and, and more precisely a mindfulness-based approach to trading psychology. And so I, I have trading psychology courses and books. Uh, I'm, I'm also in the process of opening up my coaching service as well. Those are available on my website, tradingcomposure.com. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, and I have a free course called The Psychology of Risk for Traders. And in there I discuss, so it's sort of a philosophical discussion on, on risk and, 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 and the importance of risk management and, and why we manage risk and, and why it's important to do it. And, and what are the, the, the good uh, mental approaches towards risk taking? And uh, yeah, you, you can check that out as well. It's available on tradingcomposure.com. Yeah, that's great. Especially if you, you said that in, uh, in, in, the, in the last question, you, you said something, we get some broader view at topics, get new impulses, get new insights. I think this is something which also people can learn from your work and also from your courses and, and fr from the books and, and of course also from the newsletter. So really get, um, get a new view at things to, to start changing uh, your, your own mind. Right, right. Yeah. This is super important. Yep. 
Um, be, before we, we come to the end, uh, I have two, two other questions to you, um, because this is also something I, I observe in Twitter, etc. cetera. Um, do you have any tips to become more relaxed and objective as a trader? I know you talked about mindfulness, etc., but something which, which can people do on a daily basis, uh, sitting, sitting on, a, on, on the screens and, and uh, doing his training work? Yeah, um, I, I would say, as I've said earlier, you know, the, the routine is very important. So, um, so come prepared, you know, have a morning routine. This is very important. It's, it's the reason why I've, I've had one for, for, for many, many years now. And uh, it, it's, it's because it helps me with my, pro with my trading process. It helps, direct, it helps sort of guide the direction of, of my trading day. And uh, yeah, well, invite introspective practices into your life, meditation, writing, you know, running, solo walks in the forest, whatever it is uh, that, that helps you. Reading philosophy as well, that's, that's, that's something that's very helpful, helps deepen your thought processes. And um, yeah, don't, don't, take, don't take yourself too, too seriously, you know? Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take the market too seriously. So, seriously as well invite more play, playfulness into your process um, invite more ease uh, drop the ego very important people tend tend to sort of uh, they are go-getters in the in the outside world and they think that they they have to do the same in the market um, but the thing is that in the market that's not how you typically make things work for you 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 actually trading is a is a waiting game it's it's 90% or more waiting. And, and so you, you got to learn to get comfortable with that and to allow the market to come to you, to hit your levels before you, you, uh, you uh, pull the trigger. And um, what else? That's, that's all I have in mind right now. Uh, drop, drop the ego. And I, I mentioned that. And uh, yeah, uh, be, be more open and receptive to, to, To the lessons the market is 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 handing you. Early on in my trading career, I used to take losses personally because uh, you know I'm a very sensitive person. Uh, in that's my nature, you know. So so I really had to develop a tougher skin uh, to to become the, the the consistent trader that I am. So what allowed me to develop this tougher skin is was to sort of lower my 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 position size and to focus on on um, on on repetition you know because that's what repetition did did for me it allowed losses to sort of lose this uh emotional um how do you say like em emotional trigger you know so which is not to say that that now I'm able to take losses free of emotions. No, I, I still experience some degree of frustration when my stop losses, stop losses are, are, are triggered, which is totally normal, but it's not an afflictive emotions. I, I, you know, I don't feel sorrow or despair like I used to in the past. And it's, it's like with anything, man, uh, practice makes perfect. You know, you just keep trading small sizes, And over time, you'll get better at taking your losses where you should. You'll, you'll get better at taking your profits where you should without regrets, without what ifs, you know, spinning constantly in, in your mind. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, you, you said this uh, goal getter philosophy or goal getter thing that a lot of people try to approach the market which uh with with methods and approaches they also um use in, in the in the outside market world so in their day job etc and especially when, when you when you try to reach goals in the market you put a lot of pressure on on a market and a lot of pressure on an environment which you cannot influence right. so this leads to a lot of frustration And of right. course, you, you said that 
I I am also um, I'm frustrated when when I had some losses in a row or when my stop loss get hits or when when I have a, a down gap or something. But there are two things for me. The first thing is how I experience that. One second I'm I'm maybe a little bit angry. The next second I detach myself from that. And the second thing is small losses, and that is also. Um, uh, um, also, uh, depending on the on the trading size, and also um, also of course on the stop loss I, I use, but I discovered for my th- for myself when when I have very small losses, they don't hurt me so much emotional. So it's 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 much easier to to take a very small loss than a very big loss where you always say, oh my god, this is. <laughs> This is a new car or new house or whatever. So yeah. really, really find your levels, find your limits mm-hmm. um, for for profits and also for losses. Yes, for for sure. And 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 so as as I stated earlier as well, I I can have up to fifty trades at a time, mm-hmm. which means that I'm constantly getting stopped out of my positions. And one of my strategies has a pretty low win percentage around. 35 to 40 percent, which means that I'm, I'm, I'm constantly getting stopped out of my trades. And this this was I, you know, I have to say it's it's been great for my for my psychology because it, it's it doesn't register as pain anymore. It's it's not an afflictive experience. When I get a loss, I, I get I get a sound like a sound um, sound alert. Um, you know, when that happens, and it's constant, constantly triggering, triggering throughout the day, uh, when 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 the market is 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 open, and and so I'm perfectly okay with it. Of course, there's as as I said, there's a little bit of frustration in the back of my of, of my mind, but it's not an afflictive emotion any, any, anymore. So so this speaks to to the importance of practice. You know, with repeated practice, what you'll you'll happen, what what you'll notice is that. Um, losses, they, they don't have the same emotional significance anymore. It's, it's sort of uh, sort of lower uh, the, the emotional volume, so to speak. And, and that's, that's what repetition does. So yeah, stay in the game, trade small, keep practicing, keep repeating. You'll, you'll get better over time. It's, I mean, it's a uh, it's if you're doing things right, it's it's uh, virtually a mathematical certainty. Yeah. As long as you survive, so this is important. <laughs> Survival is super important. Yeah. Then um, let's come to, to to my last question I, I prepared. So um, because people are always asking so um, about books and about uh, sources, of course your own books and also your own blog and, and Twitter page, but. Is there, is there any special books or a special book you recommend for, for new traders and also experienced traders to work on, on their mindset? Right. Um, so personally, um, I, I know there's, a, there's, a, there's this idea out there that you have to read as many books as you, as you, as you possibly can. Uh, it's, it's, part of, it's a fragment of this uh, self-help uh, um, you know, um, culture we're, we're in right now. Um, but I, I don't believe this to be effective. I'm a fervent believer in reading a few books, but a few good books, a few important books that are worth your, your, your time and energy. Um, now I understand that this is somewhat subjective, right? Uh, so, um, mm, a few books that I've personally found helpful, uh, as a trader, uh, in in terms of the psychological aspect of it, is uh, of of course the you know Mark Douglas Mark mm-hmm. Mark Douglas's books, uh, the Discipline Trader Trading in the Zone. Those are uh, those are very important books that everyone should read. And there's also uh, the Daily Trading Coach by Dr. Brett Steenbarger. Uh, Van Harp as well has written some amazing book books on the psychology of trading. Uh, I believe there's a, a Super Trader yeah. and Beyond Beyond the Matrix. Yeah. 
And uh, otherwise, I would recommend non-trading uh, philosophical books. Um, honestly, I've gained much more from, from those books, from non-trading books than I've actually gained from, from trading books. Um, so what could I recommend? Uh, uh, well, mindfulness books, I, you know, one from my, one of my teachers is called Mindfulness in Plain English. It sort of uh, guides you through the, what mindfulness inherently is and how to practice it. Um, a book on philosophy. I like Nietzsche, but I find him very difficult to read. Um, his thoughts are pretty esoteric and uh, not really accessible to beginners. So I want, I want to recommend this one. Um, what is Ray, Ray Dalio has written a good book on on uh, philosophy, on, on life, on trading, on investing, called Principle, Life and Work. Uh, Nassim Taleb as well has written a, a set of amazing books that's available in, in, in a pack called, um, oh, I don't remember. I don't remember the, the name of the pack, but it includes Black Swan, um, Anti-Fragile, and other, other books. Uh, what else? That's that's all that that's coming to my mind right now. Oh, oh on, on on human behavior, a very important book is uh, "Thinking Fast and Slow" by Daniel Kahneman, and it's it's a book that that shows you how fallible we are as human beings. Uh, it's um, like it like it all talks about phenomena like phenomena like psychological priming and biases and all of that. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I have right now. I um, except Nietzsche, I, I think I read all the books you, you said. Right. I, I must admit that I also discovered a lot about my my own personality and and a lot of things which helped me in trading in non trading books. So some some things i discovered in in trader interviews or biography books so like like for example jesse livermore books or uh from from marty swartz or something where, where you can learn about the mindset from from traders but the most things i i discovered um outside of of the trading book world so for example stoicism books or uh some right. some asian books um, um, that that helped me uh, a lot. Nassim uh, Taleb, of course. So uh, mm -hmm. Random by Fullness. Is it right? Yeah. Yes. So and yeah. there are so great books about that. And also uh, Ryan Holiday, for example, a little bit more popular. Um, he, he, he wrote a lot of books um, about stoicism, a little bit right. more modern. So, um, and this, this um, yeah. Go on. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. There's there's also um, Market Wizards as well by yeah. Jack Swagger, and shows you uh, how just um, market success. It's it, there's, there's no one method and one strategy. Um, you you'll you'll see people in there mismanage risk by con you know any conventional standard, and they're still successful. So so it shows you how tra trading is 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 such a personal experience. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I also read a book from from Ray Dalio. You talked about principles. Great book, not only about markets and trading. It's it's really about life and business itself, and uh, um, and his own philosophy, how he see things. Uh, so very interesting and definitely a recommendation. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Ivan, thank you very much for your time. It was. A great talk been. with you about yeah. uh, mindset and markets and, and your own um, uh, trading journey. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the interview and take care. Take care. I just just one thing I'd, I'd like to add. I really yeah. appreciate you you having me on and you, you've you grown a lot over the years. Uh, I think I started following you when you had uh, 2000 <laughs> and so followers on Twitter. And uh, you've you've grown a lot, and this is a testament to the kind of of of, um, of content that you put out there, you know. So it it, it speaks for for itself, and congr 
congratulations and thank you for for having me on again and i i hope that my as I, I speak with a stutter i was telling you that a little bit earlier before we begin this conversation and uh, this been has been the challenge of my life really and i usually don't go on podcasts because i'm afraid that people get distracted um by it and and sort of sort of deviates from the message i'm trying to to share and um so i'm sort of um, you, you know, I, I, I don't readily accept invitations on podcasts and, and so on, but you asked so, so nicely. And I consider you a friend. We've, we've, we've been, we've been following each other for, for a very long time now. And, uh, so, so I was very happy to, to be on and, uh, yeah. So thank you again for having me on and I wish you all the best in your, in your career and your, in, in your own journey. Thank you very much, Ivan. Thank you. All right, man. All right, take care. Take care.